Greetings! In today's video, we will be talking hover pads. Everybody's been asking me to do hover pad stuff for the longest time. I've been putting it off, and today we're doing it. Also, I haven't uploaded in a bajillion years, so I'm rusty. But we shall go and to number one. Hover pads can be used as thrusters. If I'm pitching up, the green hover pads in the front will turn on and off in response to my controls. So it's as if, so the, the top thruster, the one that's facing downward, therefore the flame is coming out at the bottom, remains on when I'm pitching up, right? Pushing the front of my craft up, essentially. And the same for the back. Uh, the green hover pads in the back do exactly the same thing. For roll, the blue hover pads, the dark blue ones, do the same exact thing. They just turn on and off depending on which side I need propulsion in order to turn. You treat them exactly like thrusters in this sense. And yaw is the same thing with the yellow ones. Those are just bound to W, A, S, D, E, and Q. Then I have my four red hover pads that are on at the moment because the flames are coming out the bottom and I turn them off to descend. Now, obviously you can tune this however you like. If you want a completely neutral buoyancy, you'll, it'll have to take a little bit of, you know, add a hover pad here, add a hover pad there, maybe add some weight, add this, add that. And then you can have two buttons, one for going up and one for going down. That's perfectly up to you. I just like my slightly positive buoyancy. And then when I press X, it goes down slowly. That's how I like it. The logic is just for going forward, but you can basically just add in one block to make it go backward. I press space, I go forward. <laughs> Very simple. The space also turns off all four sets of the black hover pads because the black hover pads keep me uh, from going backward and forward neutrally. So essentially, this is what happens. I turn the, all of the black hover pads off and I'm allowed to go forward by the force of my thrusters. Then if stopping, basically if the forward facing speed sensor is on, the thrusters will fire in the front to simulate sp stopping. Although these hover pads, the dark ones, are doing all of the work for that. And just, just for an extra little tweak, I have logic so that if I'm going backward, the dark hover pads will fire because these four thrusters, the, the backward facing ones, are not powerful enough to lift this entire creation. So I'll just go and demonstrate that. All right, so I removed the logic gate that does that function. And if I angle my creation perfectly upward, it will start falling out of the sky because the four thrusters at the back are not powerful enough. Therefore, again, I put the logic block back in the front and now I do not fall out of the sky. Very simple. So quickly, I will go over the logic. I have a space gate that's just on toggle and it activates all of the black hover pads to allow me to go and it activates the four thrusters at the back. It activates also the two end gates over here. If speed sensor is on going backward and the space gate is on, then give negative output to these four hover pads, the ones at the front, but facing backward. So the flame is coming out the back. Then this means that because I have a positive output going to these specifically the four backward facing hover pads, I have a positive output going into them and then I add a negative output. They're always on, the positive output turns them off, the negative output turns them back on because it cancels out the positive. The forward facing speed sensor activates 
my forward facing dragon jets. And then if space is active and forward facing speed sensor is active, then this will fire a negative output into the forward facing dragon jets, turning them off which means that the forward-facing dragon jets won't be on when the backward-facing dragon jets are on. That's the logic. Now, just for purposes, I'm turning the gravity up to 2. I don't know why it doesn't display it at the bottom left of my screen. It just says 1 gravity. This is just to show that hover pads are good. <laughs> Basically, this is an ego thing. <laughs> Hover pads are awesome because it doesn't matter how much, like, I, the gravity is at two. I have turned it up. I don't know why it's showing one. But uh, as you can see, this creation is completely unaffected by the gravity being two. I do have an extra set of hover pads at the bottom, but that's two hover pads. And and this thing is flying as if nothing happened. Essentially, this also helps me for a recommendation. If you're dealing with heavy creations or with creations in high gravity, you can leave some hover pads on, like the bottom two have no controls in them. So I'm turning off the top four red hover pads and I'm descending slowly. And if I turn them back on, I'm ascending slowly, right? So this is for not dropping out of the sky if you have a giant spaceship, essentially. Turn some hover pads off to descend, don't turn all of them off. It seems pretty intuitive, but I would be surprised. <laughs> all right, gravity back to one. And I will tell you about the second use of hover pads. Now, red hover pads, black hover pads, logic, all does the same things, and the thrusters, they all do the same things that the other, the other ones did. The only thing that changed is the maneuvering hover pads have no controls in them. All the controls have been shifted into hinges and servos. So as you can see, the thruster function of the hover pads has gone completely away. I cannot turn when I'm still. But hover pads can be used as thrusters and they can be used as control surfaces. So like ailerons for aeroplanes, right? In planes, if you're stationary, if there's no airflow on your wings, you don't have control of your plane. The same thing is with this. If you just keep your hover pads on, and then rotate them like control surfaces, you essentially have a plane, right? A plane that cannot maneuver when still, but it can maneuver quite well when at some sort of speed. So as you can see, while I was still, I was literally not having any responses, like the, it was completely still in the air. And now that I've picked up speed and I'm going horizontally, I can actually maneuver, right? I'll do it again. So I'm completely still, I'm pressing all of the control surfaces and I'm just not moving. I'm not doing anything. And then I'll pick up speed again. I pick up a little bit of speed and all of a sudden I'm maneuvering like a plane. This specifically is the reason why, I'll, I'll show this very clearly when I'm yawing, if I'm going at a certain speed, which is around 100 kilometers an hour for now, but this works at every speed, technically. If I yaw, it starts off quite tame. And then as the speed decreases, the yaw gets really strong. That's because essentially the back yellow hover pads are acting as tail fins. Therefore, their stabilizing effect is stronger the faster I'm going. And as I get slower, the yaw gets stronger because they have less quote unquote aerodynamic properties. I don't know if this is proper aerodynamics. It's probably not. It's probably just something really weird to do with the hover pads, but explaining it like ailerons is probably the most intuitive way to understand it. Now, 
The final solution, obviously, is to combine the two, which means that when I'm perfectly still, I have the thruster property of the hover pads working in my favor, which is why I can still move my creation when stationary. I can maneuver it properly. And then when at speed, it works even better because it adds in the aileron properties, the quote unquote aerodynamic properties. Again, this is just the version with all of the steering hinges and rotating servos working. In addition to that, the hover pads all have their inputs in them, like W, A, S, D, E, and Q. Lastly, we shall discuss hover pad propulsion. So as you can see, this is the thruster powered hover pad creation. I've just expanded it a little bit in order to add UFO engines into the center. Now, the logic is all the same. The only thing I've added is the ability to turn off manually my rear thrusters, just so we can see what the UFO engines are doing. These UFO engines specifically, are, they're just built like that. The hinges will push the wedge into the hover pad at 30 degrees. You see I'm going 100-ish kilometers an hour. I press the button, the hinges push the wedges into the hover pads, and I've climbed to 180 kilometers an hour. That's essentially all you need to know about UFO engines. Now, this set of UFO engines is relatively reliable, and this is the main one I use for most things. If you do intend to use a different kind, this also exists. Essentially, one of the advantages of this one is that it's easy to just reverse the hinges and make it go in reverse, but essentially it does the same thing. Sometimes it works with 12 degrees, sometimes it works with 30 degrees. This one's a little bit less reliable, but I'm not the expert on UFO engines, and if you want to go experiment and see what works better or what doesn't, it's completely up to you. For example, one of the things you will notice with this one is it's not doing anything when I'm angled downward. If I'm angled up, it gives propulsion. If I'm angled downward, it does not, which is you know the main reason why I'll probably be sticking to this one. Now, just to ensure that the hover pad engines, the UFO engines are doing something, this is essentially only UFO engines powered it's 154 kilometers an hour, then I turn the thrusters back on and it goes up to 180. So that's your UFO engine rundown. Other than the UFO engines, the main reason I really like hover pads is because they take few power cores and little complexity for a strong return, which means that where if you have a very big spaceship, you might need a lot of thrusters, a lot of complexity in just thruster after thruster in order to lift it and maneuver it. With hover pads, you're not that limited. There are a few quirks with them because they, it is a glitch. It doesn't work perfectly. However, I prefer it because it allows me to build uh, within the complexity limit, but with a little bit more options. Not an infinite amount more, mind you. I still need a fair amount of hover pads in order to make something work. It just gives me a little bit of an edge. In addition to this, all of the controls that you put into the hover pads, you can augment by adding in gyros and making them assist your hover pads, essentially. Especially for the roll in this build specifically, I would probably add in a gyro and have it assist so that the roll isn't so dire. Obviously, any combination, it's really up to personal preference. And there you go. That's been my breakdown of how hover pads work, how I use them, all of the tips and tricks, all of the themes and memes. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the future.